Now here's the most controversial statue in the city. But it is controversial because of one person. And I'm sorry to say that I plead guilty. Colonial and white supremacist monuments are being taken out all over the world. This issue is no different here in Barbados. The statue of Lord Admiral Nelson here in Bridgetown has caused controversial opinions between historians and academics. But what is the view of an everyday Barbadian? Do you think his statue should be up there? Should be a long time ago. A long time ago? I say here, whether day before, you see slavery abolished. Yeah. Whether day before, you see black people free. I got both about Nelson. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah support he slavery. He was a hero. He was a hero? Yeah. Okay. So you think his statue belongs out there? Well, I hear some people say so and some say so. Yeah, it's a controversial so. opinion. Yeah. But you think it's a Seattle? Well, What's your opinion? My opinion is that if they don't want to do the movie, they will the movie everything. You don't think it should be there? No. I think our heroes should be persons who work hard, especially in slavery. Yeah. To bring this country to what it was yesterday. To me, to move Nelson makes no sense. Yeah. It makes no they, sense to move Nelson. It's been here a long time now. Yes, so. and every, it's part of the it's part of our culture now, basically. Regardless of what he was or what he is, yeah. Or what he stands for, it's part of our culture. He's here, right? To move him and put, let's say, a bus or somebody else, makes no sense. Yeah. Right? Okay, Waste huh? some money. I don't know too much about him, but what I do know is that he did help fight off the French when they were trying to take over. Okay. So in that regard, with that little bit I do know, I can see why he would be attributed the status of hero. Yeah. So you think like this tribute to him, like should it stay up or um maybe yeah. more? It can, it can, I believe it should stay, but I think it should look a lot better to be refurbish more often. Up to nineteen ninety eight, no Barbadian questioned the sanctity, the uh, relevance, um, the actual authenticity of this statue. This is one of four statues to Horatio Lord Nelson, you know, England's greatest ever seaman. Yeah. One famous battles, Copenhagen, the, Mar the Nile, he's Baron Nelson of the Nile, born in Burnham Thorpe in Norfolk, you know, went to sea at 12 and never left sea until age 47 when he went home his dead body in a cask of brandy not in Barbadian rum as the myth says and that is one of, of about 20 myths developed in Barbados about Nelson now Nelson met this, the French at Trafalgar off the coast of Spain 4,000 miles away this is a point which must be made because Barbadians claim that there were three entities in that battle off the coast of Spain, 4,000 miles away. One entity was England, represented by Nelson. The uh, second entity was France, represented by um, Pierre Michel Villeneuve, the French admiral. And the third element for which the two were fighting was Barbados. <laughs> and that is something which has been believed in Barbados for the past 205 years. <laughs> now, as it happened, and the ship, the French had 33 ships, the British 26, but the British attacked, ambushed the French ships. So each French ship sailing like that fought against a British ship to the right and one to the left. So it's obvious they were overwhelmed, outmaneuvered, and they lost 26 of those 33 ships. The British lost zero. The French lost 10,000 men, the British lost 459 men, killed plus Nelson, shot at a distance of, well, from here to there, 30 feet, because the two ships were locked together, right? Shot through his back, bullet came through his chest, he died four hours later. Right, so he died and the British gave him a, a hero's funeral, and thereafter he was called the hero in Barbados. His death was regarded as a national calamity. Why we don't know, because Nelson came to this island on three occasions and he did nothing positive. He was just one of a number of British captains when he came here, he was a captain. Uh-huh. And on the last time he came here as an admiral, 
He landed, he anchored in Carlisle Bay and never came ashore. He did not have an, a positive word for this island. Now there, are, there were five statues of this in the world. First one was in Birmingham, in the Midlands, still there. Second one in Montreal, in Canada, still there. The third one was in Dublin, in Ireland. 1808. The others were 1807. And in 1961, the Irish put a bomb here, one there, one there, one there, one there, and pressed the detonator. This is the fourth. 22nd of uh, March 1813. His hand is permanently inside his left foot because the wrist was shut off and he also lost an eye. He came to Barbados on three occasions. Once when he was an 18 year old midshipman, he spent one week. The second time he came, 10 years later, he was captain of a ship, he spent two weeks. And in that time, he wrote to his girlfriend, Frances Nisbet of Nevis. And by the way, he married this lady from Nevis. The Nevisians do not have a statue to Nelson. <laughs> and he cursed Barbados, he called, this island, a desolate place, he called the people barbarous. On the third occasion he came, spent one day. He didn't come ashore. Sir and madam, they're having captains of, Bar of English ships who spent more time in Barbados than Nelson. They've done more. The actual person who saved Barbados, a man called Governor Sir George Beckwith. In Bridgetown, there's Beckwith Street, Beckwith Mall, Beckwith Fort. There's a statue at our garrison. There's back with soldiers and the British the people of Barbados gave back with 25,000 pounds at that time this is about two million pounds now for saving Barbados from the French five years after Nelson died you see so it is a monstrous a most monstrous uh, fabrication and the only thing you can do to my mind is remove it no Barbadian knows how the battle proceeded all the Barbadians were for were taught over the centuries as this, and I quote, if Nelson had lost the Battle of Trafalgar, Barbados would have become a French colony. That is the only, <clears throat> the entire analysis in Barbados of the Battle of Trafalgar. Ask any Barbadian, where was the battle fought? They do not know. How was the battle conducted? They do not know. How many ships did the French have? They don't know. How many ships did Nelson have? No, they don't know. What were his tactics? They don't know. The only thing they know is that if Nelson had lost the battle, Barbados would have become a French colony. And the truth is a dirty, a very dirty, dirty, dirty lie. This man actually was a terrible person for the Caribbean. He, in, he's, he enforced the Navigation Act. We said that no foreigners, no foreign ships could trade with English ports at any trading done with English ports by any other Englishman had to be done in English vessels. He enforced that. And wherever he saw that, he boarded the ships and threw the goods in the water. Corn, wheat, fish from um, Canada, essential supplies for the, for the slaves in the Caribbean. 50,000 slaves enslaved died as a result of Nelson's actions <laughs> in four years. The British called him home in 1788 and fired him for five years, 1788 to 1793. Captain Horatio Nelson was an unemployed British captain. He did not have a job because he had savagely desecrated the name of England or Britain as a caring mother country. He had caused the death of 50,000 black slaves. He caused desolation, starvation, famine. The worst, worst English sailor to ever come to this region. The people actually had to eat dirt. So the British sent to, listen to this, you know the breadfruit? The British sent William Bly all the way across to Tahiti to get the breadfruit. You know, you ever heard of the film Mutiny on the Bounty? Yes. Yeah. That's what happened. <laughs> oh, I didn't know. Right, that's where they're from. The crew 
were got enraged at Captain Bly's forcing them to pour water to the breadfruit saplings when they wanted the water to drink. And Nelson caused that. And no other Caribbean country has any veneration of Nelson. Only Barbados. From 1998, I've been writing, I've received death threats, I've been called an idiot, a Tristorian, not a historian, a Tristorian. That's my nickname in Barbados now, Tristorian. I've twisted the history. Uh, I've been the Minister of Education has been asked to check into whether I should teach young people. University was said were told not to give me any advancement. Oh, it has been it has been terrible, <laughs> you know, you know, because I alone went against the grain of what had been fed into Barbados from 1813, from 1813 until now, right? And only recently we have got the conversation going. And you know the conversation is rife in America, in Canada, in England, wherever in the Commonwealth you have had imperialists, white supremacists and racists having statues like these to them. You know in America they've been torn down. And Nelson himself is now coming under scrutiny. And they, the conversation, however muted, has started in Barbados. The urban African enslaved would come here on Sunday afternoons like this and look out to the ocean and remember Africa. Also, those other Africans who were enslaved would gather around and would call out in their African towns to see if there was anybody from their village and the whites put this statue deliberately where, this, where the auction used to take place so that it was a place for of memory for the Africans and five million Africans were brought ashore here over a period of 160 years now the dead ones were transported over on the other side the live ones were brought here obviously they were separated and where we were by the Nelson statue where is where look at it notice this and then the actual place where the auction took place. Now the whites took, the white people deliberately put that statue there to deaden the memory of the auction that took place here. Distraction. distraction. And the distraction has worked. The people pass this and don't even know it's here. Last year, a hurricane blew it down. I was doing a tour the two people from, two Spanish Americans from Harlem, and we saw it down. Now I called the attention of the newspaper people to it. You know what they told me? Oh, they're going back to the office now. Um, wait. When they get back to the office, give them a call, and they'll come back out. That's a nice way of saying, <laughs> you know, bye-bye, <laughs> not us. The Spaniard, Spanish American, lambasted them. He said, but this is ridiculous. And he's photographed it. He and his wife and myself standing here. I'm going to send this to CNN. If this is the place where five million people came ashore from Africa and this is blown down, and you guys, newspaper men, the fourth estate, is not important to you. We're going to get you fired. So only then did they take shots of it. And a white woman who was a columnist in the newspaper said, that, um, there goes Trevor Marshall again seeking publicity. And if, if, he, if he saw that the plot was done, why did he not raise it himself? This is 250 pounds. I should raise it myself and put it back up. So you can write any nonsense. Because you, you know that if Marshall responds, the newspapers will not print it. That's, how, that's where we are at the point at this time. That I, all my research, and I've done a book on it, I can't get it printed here, right? All my research is regarded as the rantings, this madman who has a fixation about Nelson and slavery. <laughs> Not that slavery and whatever has anything to do with, with you, Ray, or other Barbadians. It is just Trevor Marshall. And that is how people deal with these issues. You see, I become, I could become the problem now. And as I said, 
I've received more death threats than, I don't know, Salman Rushdie or somebody like that. He ain't a hero for Barbados, you understand? He's just an Englishman that come down here, that come down here fighting war, lost, yeah, he lost, he hand. And that's it. And that is it. But for right now, the heroes should be here, not here.